This is a conversion process that must take place. Whenever you create an intention, you place it in your sacred space, you become the embodiment of that energy. It instantaneously assumes the form of a metaphysical reality. Now, how do you get that metaphysical energy to convert itself down into the physical? Well, it's easy. You utilize the energies of the earth and the conduit of water, as well as yourself, because you're already in that state of knowing that those energies have already formulated themselves in preparation of the inevitable arrival of these things as a vibrational physical equivalent. So you have to wait for the physical to catch up to where your sacred space has always been, because it's like a race between a rocket ship and a snail. So the snail, of course, is the physical, and you have to wait through that conversion process. As I've said before, good things take time, great things take a little longer. The larger your intention, the longer it's going to take in the physical. It, think of it as your sacred space as a brand new machine, could work lightning speed. And think of this earth as the same type of machine, but only 300 years older. It's slower. It's going to operate in a slower speed. It's going to take longer to get the same results. That's really what you're waiting on, the conversion process. And you have to maintain that knowing that I have it already. You have to be a consistent, dependable, reliable source as a life force that animates these things into being. Now, during that time, you have to understand you have to be patient with it because you have to be a vibrational equivalent to the elements of energies in that field of energy, that vibrational environment. Again, as before, as I've said, nothing to do with the law of attraction. That's garbage. That's reptilian nonsense. Junk. Just throw that junk out. This is the principles of activation I'm referring to. Meaning that they're there already. The reason you don't see them is you're not vibrating in that vibrational field. You're not an equivalent energy to them. Once you enter that vibrational field of energy, you become an equivalent to them. Those elements that occupy that space will make themselves known. And sometimes that takes time. Because you have to understand the physical is not where the metaphysical is. Two objects cannot occupy the same space at the same time in the physical. Those laws do not apply to the metaphysical. When you speak of dimensions, these are not levels like stairs in a building. These are actually different planes of consciousness that are superimposing themselves within each other, not sandwiching on top of each other, inside as one, occupying the same vibrational space, the same spatial plane. Science can't wrap its head around this stuff. There's no limit to God, man. I'm trying to tell you. Become the embodiment of it and don't let this world tell you otherwise. That's why I say you must deny the evidence of your physical senses when they run contrary to your metaphysical desires. Because metaphysical energies always precede physical presence exponentially. And it's also the same in reverse. Because they stay in residual, residual lingering form and permeate the area. It always works that way. In other words, before your body gets there... Your physical body arrives, your metaphysical essence has already arrived and is setting the stage for your physical arrival. And it's that same way in reverse. So you got to wait for that conversion process. I always use the example of two tuning forks. You have two tuning forks side by side. As long as they're tuned to the same frequency, like let's say 432 hertz, hit one, the other one will vibrate every time. Why is that? Because they operate in the same vibrational field. They're at the same frequency. They're tuned to the same vibration. They recognize each other. Energies always recognize each other. That garbage about like attracts like is junk. You don't attract anything. You activate everything in that vibration of field that you are presently occupying. That's why I said before, you can have 50 people, 100 people in one physical space, and they're all plugged into something different. Somebody just laughing and smiling, two, two people next to him, miserable. You know, somebody's rubbing shoulders with somebody else. Exact polar opposites. Why is that? Because they're dialing into something completely different than each other. Two completely different vibrational fields that they're occupying. Yet at the same time, they're occupying the same physical space because the metaphysical does not recognize the laws of the physical. So it's just that simple. That's why you can have evil and good in the same room because they're occupying different dimensional planes of existence and consciousness and unconsciousness, but they're occupying the same physical space. 
So you have to get in tune with the fact that there's no law of attraction. That's nonsense. It's the principles of activation I'm trying to make you aware of. This is what was told to me by source. You don't attract anything. You activate everything that's there already. And when you become consciously aware of this, you raise your vibration. Your perceptive lens changes. You become enlightened. You begin to ascend. And what happens is everything concurs. Even in your own home. You know, you could be very low, miserable, depressed five years ago, but you're not that person anymore. Now you're like, oh my God, I never saw that. I never realized this. How, how long has this been there? You'll see things appear as if out of nowhere. And it'll freak you out at first. But that's because you're vibrating at a different resonant frequency, a different vibrational field. Psychiatry or psychology, I think it's psychiatry, has an explanation. It's called paradoilia, the psychological phenomenon in which the mind makes sense of irregular shapes and patterns. Of course, this is science's attempt to explain away the metaphysical and the spiritual. Like, that's just rubbish. Oh, that thing you're seeing in there? It, it's not what you're seeing. You're your mind is just making up patterns that it can recognize. That's all it is. It's always the mind, folks. The mind is the end-all, be-all. So listen to us. We know what we're talking about. So says the reptilians. Because they always put it in this order. Mind, body, and soul at the bottom. Are you catching on? I really hope so. If you want to see something in your life, you must be that something, vibrationally speaking. Because everything operates on the same resonant frequency as anything else in that vibrational field. And those vibrational fields can superimpose themselves over others. It's just the way it is, man. It isn't just this and that's it. No, it's everything and more. <laughs> Things I can't explain using earth words. Just can't. I'm not even going to bother trying. But I'm telling you, if there's anything you want to manifest, you got it. As long as you become it and maintain that field of energy as a persistent, consistent vibrational equivalent for as long as it takes until the lower and slower density of this physical world gets that high vibrational energy converted down into the terrestrial density of this physical matter. Because that's what's going to take the most time. So just be patient. And that's where people get it wrong. Because they're like, it's not happening. I don't see it. Nothing's being done. I don't believe in this stuff. This is garbage. You know, I've been trying to manifest and I don't see anything happening because of what you're doing. Exactly what you're saying. I don't believe it. I reject it. This isn't true. And what you're doing is you're disconnecting your energy from the process. Essentially pulling the plug from the wall and you watch the light go out. You are the life force. You are the fuel source and the power supply of this. If you pull out, it all shuts down. You understand? Until you see these things materialize, actualize, realize, or manifest as vibrational physical equivalents to what exists or thrives inside your sacred space, do not back off. Do not give up and do not go away. Stay there. Stay the course. Be persistent. Be reliable, dependable. Be dedicated, loyal, and devoted to you. Because there's nobody else that can do it for you but you. So if you want to change your life, you have to recognize the necessity within yourself for change, or else change will never arrive inside yourself because nobody can force you to do something against your will. You understand? I hope I'm getting through to you. If you want to see something change in your life, then you must be that change in order to see that change. That means you have to become the embodiment of what you feel that is and maintain that energy indefinitely until it manifests and then move on to the next and on to the next. The law of attraction is garbage. And there's a famous lady out there, and I'm quite sure you know who she is. She's full of herself. Okay? She's big time full of herself. And I could tell you something else. Everyone with that type of fame, how do you think she got that fame? By accident? I've said it before. Anyone with that type of notoriety and fame had to do horrendous things to get that fame. Trust me, those people are not what you think they are. And they're not going to volunteer that information. That's straight truth from my heart to yours. I'm not promoting anything on my channel. I'm not pushing anything on you. This is all free content, man, from my heart to yours. I'm not better than you. I'm not worse than you. We're equal. 
In the eyes of the Almighty, everything is equal, man. I don't care what anybody tells you. I don't care if somebody's got a trillion dollars or somebody's homeless in the street. We're all equal in the eyes of God. Nobody's closer to God. Jesus Christ is not closer to God than you are or I am or anybody. And all of God's children, not just human beings, we're all equal within the eyes of the Almighty. There are no chosen. The only difference is we have different talents and abilities. We should celebrate that diversity, not try to kill each other over it. I've said that before. Manifesting is very easy. Don't give up. You know? You are the one that supplies the everything of everything needed for that process to take place and its reality to be realized, to reach fruition. And if you pull out, you are the power supply and the energy. So what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> Lights out. Everybody go home. It's a done deal. This project is finished. We didn't even have a chance to get started yet. Do you, do you feel where I'm coming from? Do you see what I'm saying? You know? Are you on the same page as me? I hope so. Forget about the law of attraction. It's garbage. According to their law of attraction, if you're sitting in your car, having the greatest day of your life, enjoying your family, listening to beautiful music, whatever the case may be, and you get slammed into by a tractor trailer, guess what? Their law of attraction says, you attracted it on some level. Well, let's play that game, shall we? What about all of the victims of 911, September 11th, 2001? Did they, through the law of attraction, attract that horrendous atrocity to them? Did they wake up in the morning and say, you know what? I think I want to have a fully fueled 777 slam it to the side of the building and kill everybody because I don't want to live anymore. Do you honestly think that happened? Watching all of those people, those poor people, Throwing, them, throwing themselves out of windows that are 1,300 feet up off the ground, hitting concrete? Do you think that they attracted that to them? A brand new baby gets raped and murdered by a pedophile? The baby attracted that to itself? I can go on for hours, man. Slavery, the Holocaust, world, all the world wars, all of the victims of all the crimes, the innocent victims, did they attract that to them? People in their home watching TV become the victims of home invaders. Did they attract that to them when they just want to be left alone and enjoy their family in peace? I could be here for hours. Anybody that says the law of attraction is real, I can easily dispel it. All I have to do is ask them, what kind of state of mind are you in? They say, oh, I'm feeling great. Then all I'd have to do is pull out a metaphorical gun and put it right to their head. Boom, you're done. There goes your law of attraction. Right out the window. You can't be responsible for somebody else's actions or their mentality or the lunacy or whatever energy they're carrying. The law of attraction is garbage. That's why they're spoon feeding it to you. And that's why you gobble it up. That's why you're not manifesting things. But if you are manifesting, you're actually using the principles of activation because you're becoming an equivalent to something that already exists, but you don't see it because you're not vibrating in that field yet. But once you do, then you'll see it. You're slowly edging your way up to it. And that's just the way it works in the universe. It's a beautiful thing. Don't reject it, you know? Don't deny it. Embrace it. Accept it. Love it. Love it into light and let it be whatever it's going to be. That's why you can never repress any energy because it must be expressed to its fullest potential, either in the physical or in an alternate dimension or a parallel universe. But that energy must be expressed. It is the process of catharsis which is the process of releasing emotions. Never repress, internalize, or suppress anything. Those energies must be expressed and realized to their fullest potential, irregardless of where that expression will take place. So express yourself. Be yourself. Don't be afraid to be yourself. Become the very embodiment of yourself and allow the world to know who and what you're all about. By not being afraid to be yourself. Because it should never require courage in order for you to be yourself, man. Manifesting is easy. The difficulty comes in your alignment with it. Your empowering it or not. You know, do you, do you accept this as the truth? See, I say I possess a certainty. An absolute certainty of an unwavering knowing that I have it already. So nothing can waver my knowing. 
See, because when you take faith, hope, trust, and belief, and you combine that, that doesn't even come close to knowing I have it already. Because all of those operate off of assumption. When you know you have it, like the skin on your body, that's a done deal. There's no doubt. There's no uncertainty. There's no trepidation. There's no questioning anything. I have it already. So therefore, you can't convince me that I don't. And this world will try to convince you that you don't have your dreams when you do. You are your dreams. You're not attracting them from 60 million miles away. Because that's what the law of attraction is doing. It is enforcing and reinforcing the lack, loss, and absence mentality. I don't have it. So I have to attract it and bring it to me. Because attraction infers it's coming from some distance that has to travel to you before it gets to you. Am I wrong? So there you go. You got this. Just convince yourself that you're aces, and you will be. And just work steadily towards you becoming the person that you knew that you always could be, because that's the reason why God never gave up on you, because God sees the potential in you that you failed to see in yourself, because society convinced you a long time ago that you're nothing. I'm going to leave you with this. You remember a long time ago, all those people that told you you were nothing and stupid, and you never amount to anything, and you're a bum and an idiot and a moron, you don't have what it takes? Well, guess what? They lied. Because you do. And then some. God bless you.